Hey everyone, hope everyone is doing good today. Uh, I haven't done a live in a long time, you know. I have not done a live. I mean, I post videos, you know, I'll post some little videos, videos and so forth. But like the actual doing of a live, I have not done that in a long time. Probably before COVID came on. I don't remember. If I've done it, forgive me, I don't remember. But I don't recall doing a live. As I said, I'll post some videos here, there and so on. But yeah, uh, face, why I don't have scrub. No makeup, no filter, none of these things now. Cha, my pretty same way. I look good, I smell good, I tan good, I feel good. Yeah. All right, people. So, what do I say now where this matter is concerned? You know, I was on the job yesterday and I realized that something is radically wrong in our country. Not and, I, and again, people, I know that these things happen in other countries. I don't live there. I live here. Does, I'm not saying that I can't speak on other countries sometimes, you know. And uh, I'm not going to tell you that I don't have my biases sometimes. I'm not perfect. I'm human like the rest of you guys, you know. But you know what? Um, I saw the video. I saw the video of the police officer in the act, you know, you know, and um, the compromising situation. Many of you are aware of it. And you know what? I'm... You know what came to my mind as I'm thinking about it? I'm thinking about the time with Jesus, with the lady who was caught in the act of adultery. You know, and they threw her to, you know, basically threw her out to Jesus. In my head, I always I said to myself, why? So if she's caught in the act of adultery. Um, how is it that she's the only one that was thrown, you know, basically in the presence of Jesus? So how would she be? In the act of adultery on her own i always wonder what happened to the others you know and they're ready to stone her and you know and crucify the girl and basically send her to the gallows so to speak and jesus in his very perfect self literally perfect i mean flawless blameless guiltless then and now was writing something in the sand whatever he wrote we don't know what he wrote if i was to put a storyline to it i probably would surmise and say you know and say you know jesus probably and he says his thoughts and his ways are not like ours you know probably in my own limited human way i probably said jesus said boy it's so funny look at how they're throwing this lady in front of me to be crucified and to be stoned because of the customs and the laws back then you know um that you know under the mosaic law you know a woman caught in the act of adultery will be stoned and different other things and um you know he's saying look at it these people are not perfect in other words they commit different acts of sin and different things that are just not good and not right and here it is that they throw her to for, for me to be for me to crucify her or to you know whether stone or crucify her just do her bad you know and judge her negatively and out of his perfect state perfect perfect state out of his perfect state Jesus said since you guys are really without sin go ahead you can stone her you have all right to once it is that you have no form of sin inside of yourself stone that lady stone her go ahead basically in his own way you know so since you have no sin you stone her and I'm juxtaposing it to this situation with the police officer you know, and people making a joke out of it, um, you know, because he mentioned about the taste of it, tasting like ice cream or type rum and raisin and, you know, all of them things there. And in the palm, probably all kind of different social media platforms, it's gone viral. And um, the complete, I don't think that whoever sent it out because some people are blaming him some people are blaming the lady some people blaming the wife wherever however it started the fact of the matter is it's a horrific situation because sometimes we don't think about the aftermath the after effect of totally embarrassing totally degrading totally destroying this man family family life and i'm not saying that his action or his, ac or his actions 
will not create some kind of problems. Don't get me wrong whether or not a video was sent out. Don't get me wrong on that one, you know. But I'm just simply saying that I find that we are a country. Again, I'm speaking of us, Jamaica. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to incorporate any other country. This is where I live. But I find there there is a spirit of shame and disgrace and embarrassment humiliating people on the land. It seems as if we take pleasure in humiliating people. As we see something bad or we hear something bad, we spread it like wildfire. We spread it and we destroy somebody's life. So even if it is that he contributed to destroying his own marriage, you know, at some point or other, you know, it's almost like we, we, we feel no shame and we don't feel any way in, in putting the cherry on top and in it to help in the demise and the destruction of this man's life and this man's family life and friends and people that he, you know, are, is associated with. And they send around the video totally disgracing this man totally forgetting that hey you know if this thing goes viral it can damage his life damage his family's life damage your reputation damage every aspect totally annihilating him you know because guess what we perfect you never remember that we are perfect so let us put ourselves in the sea this ourselves in the scene of jesus with the lady who was caught in the act of adultery so jesus is basically saying to us since we are sinless and since we are guiltless we are we are perfect we have done no wrong any at all let us just cast the stone on this man you know we don't care about whatever aftermath we don't care about whatever effects that will take place after but let us just throw the stones so what we're gonna do we're gonna send it to everybody you see this i mean i tell you you know them and they're wicked out oh, there they woman they're wicked you know and this and that and we say all kinds of things and we pass a lot of judgment on the man's situation not knowing that this thing can cause even death. Because right now he's on suicidal watch, I'm told. That he's on suicide. I can't imagine, you know, just... I, I, I'm I even afraid sometimes to put myself in his position. I just, because I know, you know, the kind of human beings we are as a people. How we, how we deal with... How we treat people. That we are on... We are on this path and we're comfortable, you know tearing down people we're comfortable you know destroying somebody's life we're comfortable with that we feel good yes i'm going to humiliate this man i'm going to embarrass this man so i'm going to send around the video and all of that sometimes unwittingly we send it around because we just feel good with the gossip you know and the spreading or something that is bad we feel good you, you see this you never know we have we have itching here and we like things that are negative we feel good about that why you see this video come here look here look here look here let me send it this let me send it this and the next person sometimes you may not necessarily be thinking of destroying the man's life you know but so while you may be thinking what okay i guess something went wrong right there so while you may be thinking that um uh i'm only i just want people to see what is happening and whatever it is just for a moment, when you get videos like this, or not necessarily get somebody shows it to you, think about if somebody was to send that out to others, you know, and totally just say, sure, I just want people to see it, or sure, you see, oh, this person say, whatever the reason may be, and think about how it would affect you. You know, everything that we do, what I tell myself these days is that everything that I say and do now when I'm dealing with people, just put myself in the position and say, Suppose this was to happen to me, how would I feel? How would I react? Suppose somebody was to say this to me, how would I feel? Would I, you know, I try my best as much as I can these days to do that before I act. Sometimes I'm not telling you a lie. When we vex, because sometimes we, us women, when we vex, you know, we chat and we chat and then we have regrets later. You know why I said that? I find the older you get, and I've seen it with much older persons, when you talk to them, talk to an old person, hear what, the, what they'll say a lot. I remember when I this, I remember when I that, I remember. So can you imagine if the mind, after a certain time, tends to bring back to memory all of the things that you did? And if everything or most things that you did, they don't leave a good feeling within. Can you imagine how you really will feel? Maybe that's why sometimes you wonder how suddenly somebody commits suicide or somebody does this or that, that or the other. Because when the memories, when they all bunk them together it's like a snowball it all piles up and it becomes big like a um there's a movie i used to watch, watch back in the day called blog what's the name again S slobber i don't remember it's like a nasty nasty thing coming from outer space and then everything it, it just became bigger and bigger and bigger and ate the people up or so it looked like a nasty boogle i don't know how to describe it 
my descriptions are very graphic that's the best way to do it i never touch it touch it yam out the people in my skin and you know eat them up and became bigger and bigger that's what tends to happen so can you imagine how the older you get you're thinking about everything that you have done to somebody that maybe an unkind word, something unkind you have said or unkind that you have done. Some rumor that you spread, you got something negative and you spread that and that, that plays on the mind when you get older. Eh? I wonder sometimes how you're really going to feel about yourself when you sit and you think about the things that you do to others. And I honestly, this situation with the police officer, you know, and the, the woman, it's sad it is very sad on a number of things and forgive me if i feel like if it seems as if i'm all over the place i'm not really all over the place i'm just trying to pull it's like a spring like you 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 spring here you spring there but to get back to the hole get back to the main thing <sighs> a lot of our men and our women are broken in this society because we i don't know if it is from our foreparents from slavery coming up that parenting and I'm not going to judge anybody about their parenting style. But I'm speaking in general about there is a level of aggression in this side of the world. In Jamaica, I'm talking about where we deal with things in an aggressive manner. Generally speaking, I'm not talking about in every single solitary household. But generally speaking, we deal with things aggressively. So, for example, if a child does something wrong, we don't necessarily scold them gently. The Bible says, whatever you, if you're going to, if you're going to scold somebody, if you're going, if you're going to, to chastise somebody, do it with love. And, and I'm not saying that your voice has to be very dowdy and very low. Uh, acting like you're idiotic. Don't miss what I'm saying. But I find that we deal with, we have to deal with it the worst way possible. <laughs> Even if it is the first time you're, you're dealing with the situation. I find that there is this level of aggression. I find that there is a level of shame. So you have to shame the child. Shame the individual. And it, what happens, it transcends into adulthood. So now somebody does something wrong. Like, for example, the police officer. We have to shame him, humiliate him, and embarrass him. I always liken this onto a medical doctor situation. Now, suppose you're very, very sick. And you schedule an appointment to go to the doctor. And you say, Doc, my head hurts, my belly hurts, my hand hurts, this, that, that. And you name out all the different uh, symptoms and feelings that you have in your body physically. And you say this to the doctor. And after the, at the end of saying this to the doctor, I say, the doctor says to you, you're lucky, go sit down. I will tell you if you go eat bad food. I will tell you if you go, you know, exercise. I will tell you if you go this and that. You're lucky. I'm going to help you. Come out of my office. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? You are ill. Maybe it could be an illness that can take your life. One of those chronic illnesses. Like sadly what happened to that girl with asthma. You know? And this is an asthmatic, asthmatic person speaking to you. Thank God. God has been good. I have not had an asthma attack in years. You know? And they basically ignore you. And leave you to die you know and that is how we deal with things here in jamaica we deal with it the worst possible way we don't think about rehabilitating somebody we don't think about what his childhood could be how he was grown up what he was exposed to we don't know about his marriage life i'm not saying you need to get into somebody's personal life you're missing the point that i'm making i'm saying that we don't think about where the mindset of that man is whether he's a churchman or not we don't know what his life is like. We don't know if his marriage life was happy, was unhappy. We don't know if he was thinking of, you know, um, he tried it with his wife and she was not willing. Because sometimes these things happen and we have to keep it real. Sometimes you have women who are not willing to work on their marriages in the way that is pleasing to the husband. And I'm not talking about doing yourself in some unseeming way to do a kind of terrible things you know like if i go to three some four some five i'm talking about you and your husband personally now for example a man might like if he's in sexual intercourse with his wife he may like it up to, to, to position you a certain way you know but just for something creative and woman just want a one style a one way she not do it because she has to oh my wife i'm lucky go sit down and go keep himself quiet and take what me get he may she may not be vibrant and active and with it because he can know if you're with it or not you know, you don't do other things to spice up the marriage, you know, in ways that, you know, are good. And when I say ways that are good, I'm not talking about um, something that, you know, obviously is way of like going to a goat, a cow or some sick thing like that. You know what I mean? So sometimes, you know, even in relationships, people don't work at their marriages. They don't work at it. And I'm not saying that a person who can work at it will still not experience problems such as what took place with the police officer. But I'm simply saying sometimes we help to fuel it whether or not we want to admit it women you know as wives they help to fuel him going out they don't 
try to see what the mindset of their husbands are. The mindset. They don't try to, you know, so to speak, get in his head. They don't think about, again, the whole thing about treating others as how you'd want somebody to treat you. You know, and um, they don't bring that, keep that spice and that. And also, it's not even about sex alone. Is the treatment of the man. Sometimes we women treat the man bad. How we, the words we use, we are very saucy with our words. And they linger on and it's hurtful. And when a man faces this day and then he out after a while, him just say, he can't manage this anymore. Sometimes he may not physically leave you, but emotionally he may leave you. You know, mentally he may leave you. May still provide a little, you know, do the husbandity, but it's not done out of that love, that affection. Because this side of the world, somehow we're not grown up that way. And what ends up happening, a lot of our men, and no disrespect to any man here, please don't take no disrespect from this. That a lot of our men are broken, even our women. A lot of our men are broken, they're broken, they're broken badly. You know, and they can't, they don't know how to express that brokenness. They have been hurt. Um, they have been treated very badly from a child coming up. They have been rejected. They have been ostracized. And uh, what it end up happening is that the older they get, and in Jamaica here, everything is taboo. You can't talk. You can't talk freely. People use it against you. People crucify you. I forgot. There, I remember there was a politician. Maybe he wanted to change. You know, and he was saying, well, I was one of them who gave people guns and you know, I guess he was saying it from a place of humility and wanting transfer me. And the music against him, I say, you see him? He might be 10 years. And I'm like, are we real? Are we real? So if him don't talk, we'll crucify him. If the man talk because he want help, we'll crucify him. You see, the problem with that is a problem we face in Jamaica. So people do things underhanding. So I'm using that e example about how we are treated. So what ends up happening because they're rejected and ostracized, as you grow up, you become a man. I know men love sex. Come on. Let's be real women. Let's be real men. Men and women, men love sex. So he has, uh, everybody have them probably kinky way. I want to say kinky, but not necessarily something that is just way off. Like me, I think about going to dark, cow, or going to the same sex or anything like that. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. All of us want something, you know, you have, you, in your own sexual fantasies, you have an idea of what you would want. You know, that is going to be different from maybe the norm or what at. So he wants to express that. He probably tried expressing it to wife. And it's not, it's not re um, reciprocated. It's not received. You know, especially under, you know, with no disrespect to any church. But sometimes churches almost want to tell people what they're doing in their bedroom. The Bible said the bed is undefiled. You know, tells, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. I'm not even going to get in a conversation with that. Where you and your husband doing at the bed wives? Or between you and your husband and God? Or among the throne or rather? I mean, I'm not supposed to tell you, say, you do this and you do that. Unless somebody's going to help you if you're having issues with your marriage in terms of sex. Because a lot of women are not pleased. They're not being satisfied by their, by their husbands. They don't want to say it and vice versa. The men are not being satisfied. And, and maybe they don't know how to talk as if they do it. They're going to feel like they're putting down the man and making him feel incompetent. Men is not like the woman trying to take away your egos. But maybe she doesn't. She tries to communicate and you're not listening. You know? And vice versa. You know, and, 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 and when they go to counseling, sometimes I can't be the, the, the pastor, whoever it is that counsels you, they can say, okay, I can recommend this person. You know, this is a good person that can help you in that area, you know, for the good. You know, and uh, people, because they don't express that, they don't go through all of that. We're in the era now, as somebody said, where we learn, where we unlearn, and where we relearn. So, I mean, this is what, took place, what had happened and took place back in the day. You can unlearn and you can relearn. You have to be willing. We 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 are we are living in the land. We're we're in a in a quantum time. You know, we're in a time where you don't have to because ten years ago you believe one thing, you have to believe it now. And I'm not talking about principles of the Bible. No, no, say me gonna come with that. I'm not talking about principles of the Bible now. You know, for example, you might say, you know, I, I never used to wear pants because a man and all kind of things. You might come and say it's a man thing and whatever it is. I love to use the scripture about Bible saying men clothes. That's their, their misunderstanding because you know that you have clothes that are. It's obvious if somebody um, is using it to, to connote or to show that I, I, I want to give an impression that I'm a man versus wearing pants. If you see my pants, then come on. You know, say, I have that, that are definitely not man pants. You know, my pants personally. You know, say, I'm going mean, to look like man when I dress like dressing at them. So there is a complete difference. So we take the scriptures out of context. 
And I tell people, don't take the scriptures at face value. Say a prayer. I don't care if you're a Christian, non-Christian, Christian, Rasta, Buddha, Confucius. I don't care where, what it is. Ask God to give you a, a, a wisdom, knowledge, and understanding about the, when you're reading the Bible. Don't just read for reading's sake. And try and read a good, um, a good uh, version of it. You know? Um, you have like the Good News Translation. I think that's a good one. You know? Um, maybe some of the NIV versions are good ones and you have different type good news. I, I find that it tends to be, it's almost like it's real. It's a talk to you now in this modern 21st century and be real with you, you know, but I'm simply saying that this side of the world, people forgive me if I'm seemingly all over the place. I'm trying to get back to the whole, but I'm trying to touch on everything without making the video overly, 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 overly long. That we live in this country here, Jamaica, I'm talking, because this is where I live. I'm not talking about nobody else's country. I know there's some live. Yes, some live. And we treat each other in an aggressive manner. If somebody confides in us, we feel the need to, sh to tell everybody else. We feel, we feel good, humiliating and embarrassing people because of our own, our own weaknesses. Our own even idiosyncrasies, meaning that we just feel it's like something I kill you if we know, if we know, say something to somebody else. We, we, we are dead if we not gossip. We are not, we are dead. If you're not tail bearers, we're not we're, we're, we're dead if we're not spread it and mash up somebody else's life. And the worst part of it, you know, you know, the, the, the amazing part, I should say, rather, is that we forget that we're human beings as well. We forget that, oh, we're flawed beings. Sometimes when I think and I sit, when I sit and I think rather, and I think about some of the things that I've said to people back in the day, I, you know, I feel awful. Like I want to rewind the time and take it back. I want to rewind the time and I want to take it back. I said, God, why? Why? Sometimes I say, why? You know, some of the wrongs that I've done in my own life may not be the same type of wrongs, but they're wrongs. It could be worse. It could have worse effect than what this man has done. And we sit and we feel comfortable and we feel good. I say, I lady talk about which one you want. Like, should I say Listerine or this? And I'm like, really, lady? That's your comment? And that's how we deal with things. We put band-aid on big sores in this country. Band-aid on big, big sores. We don't get to the root. Why nobody can't? For once, you see somebody doing something wrong then. The two of them wrong. The lady in the video with the policeman, they're wrong. Why not try to get them help? Why can't we? The first thing we think of is getting them help. Because obviously they need it. Obviously they need it. But we just love to crucify, we love to, we love to crush people, we feel good. And you know, after a while, what I'm trying to say to you, when it plays back on the mind, it doesn't feel good. That is why after a while, maybe, I, I, and I'm surmising, I'm not saying this is so, maybe that's why, as I said, people commit suicide after a while, they wonder, oh, them did seem all right. Or their mind goes, their mind goes, maybe they lose their mind because they can't stand to think of all the bad they have done to people. They can't stand to think about all the lies that they have spread on people, the rumors, the things that they have sent out. Now, whoever sent out that video, whichever one, I'm not going to speculate because I don't know whoever sent it out. You know, after a while when they sit and they think of what, the destruction that they have caused. Because now I hear the wife has left him. If he has children, oh my God. If somebody send them card, this is the, the, the age now, everybody say everything. So can you imagine the effect that, that I'm saying? When you sit and you think about how devastating this thing is because of how we are as a people we are in the time where we love to humiliate to shame and to embarrass and to scandal you can't okay, feel good if you don't do these things you know what happened to what happened to being your brother's keeper what happened to being your sister's keeper what happened to just you know holding something not creating problems like these why why is it that we we have to feel like, because I feel like I want to gossip, I feel like I want to spread something and destroy somebody's life. I have to do it and feel comfortable doing it. What benefit you get from that? Whoever did it. I, you know, it's just uh, amazing to me. Whatever, what benefit you get from that? No, they are wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to laud what the man has done. I'm not going to laud what the woman has done. Don't get me wrong. But that's not for us to judge. No, no, we can't judge a, a soul upon this planet. Just sit for two minutes. Think about yourself. Ask God to reveal yourself to you if you don't know yourself. Say, so Lord, I don't care if you're a Christian, but say, so Lord, reveal me to me. And let him show you your heart. Think, you know, how you think on, about others, how you view others, how you treat others. The things that you have done. 
You know, although God says he remembers no, your sin no more once you confess them and ask for forgiveness and you turn and you repent. But if you were to say, God, really, show me who I am really. The bad part to, of me. There's a song that says, search me, oh God, any wicked ways in me. You know, get it out, basically. Ask God. And you tell me to yourself now. If you, if, you, if you look at yourself and say, boy, all is well then. Maybe you are the person I should worship. Maybe you should say, boy, Jesus, it look like me fine. Somebody else will stay like you. So therefore, well, just like in the days when they say, ye without sin cast the first stone. Maybe me can, that person has that right to cast the stone on the man and the woman. Why can't we live in a land? Why can't we unlearn? Remember, we're in the era of learning, unlearning, and relearning. Why can't we unlearn the aggressive way of parenting, the aggressive way of treating somebody? Why can't we unlearn? Instead of gossiping, let me help. Let me help. Because we are in the era of transformation, for better. You see how everybody know, because of the COVID, they're afraid, they're afraid for dead? Oh, not dead one day, still in the all away. But you see how everybody afraid for dead? So everybody now taking precautions and changing this and changing everything. Why not take that same energy when dealing with people who are broken? Because many of us in Jamaica, we are broken badly. Because of bad parenting and bad exposure to um, to whether the community that they live in, things that they have been allowed to, to watch, things that they have been allowed to say, to do and all of that. We are broken as a narcissistic society. Everybody self-centered, selfish, selfish, and mean, 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 and stingy. And we're in the era of just shame and embarrassment and humiliation and disgracing people. And feel good in churches, out of churches. A lot of the people talk about church people, this and church, who the same thing too, outside of church. So the talk about church, guys, same human beings, them gone in there. And they're not getting the help because guess what happened? They, they transform... In terms of saying God come into my life. But they forget that there is a heart factor. That has to be changed. And that takes work. And the soul factor. Which is a composite of your feelings. Your mind. And your emotions. So the soul factor. If that not change. You will see people in a church for many many years. And still not change. They might come like a worse than I get. Satan just have them ring round. Ring round like that. Because really they are not truly changed. And that's why the word of God say. Yeah, the only way you can really change. You have to read the Bible. And you have to transform your mind. You say God. This, yeah, this your word say. Help me to be like this. And you have to say it daily. Daily. It doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. When they say be perfect. It means be mature. You ever deal with a mature person? Yes. A mature person is forgiving. A, ma a mature person is kind. A mature person say. Boy you know say. I'm not passing judgment. I'm not God. I probably wouldn't do that. But guess what. I'm going to pray for the person. So that they become better. If it's somebody I know. I'm going to try to offer help. Where I can offer help. We're in that era where we can do that. We can use social media to post things good about people. You don't get a video like that and post it on the place and destroy the man's life. Because sometimes I don't feel okay you know, because it has not happened to you yet. You do. I tell somebody how you think now. If you're in your 30s, you're not thinking the same way. You're not going to think the same way when you're in your um, 40s and when you're in your 50s and when you're in your 60s. Somebody was saying to me, Tony, and when people, especially for men, when they're in their 50s, they go through a midlife crisis. Maybe things that they think that everything is going to end. So they, they want to accomplish, you know, things. Maybe some things that them, them friends said, no, man, try this, try this or that and try that and try all kind of something. Whether three, some four, some five, some six, some six, six whatever some. You know, then they do it and realize, oh, my God, what kind of madness is this? But it, you say in a the moment, they're not thinking, what effect this is going to have on my family, what effect this is really going to have on me after a while. If this thing were to get out, what effect? When you start to think about Jesus, people, you know, me can't talk to somebody because look at that. Them know some used to do this and that. You know, all sorts of things. So I'm saying that to say this when I make, make, make mention. Don't laugh at somebody's demise right now because of the situation that they're in. You don't know what will happen to you. That's why you have to cultivate from now an attitude of doing good to others. An attitude of treating others the way you'd want to be treated and you don't look to shame and embarrass and humiliate people even if they're in the wrong even if you feel tempted to just relax leave all punishment vengeance judgment all of these things to the perfect one jesus christ leave it to god i know you you're not perfect you're not perfect you have done wrongs it's just that you know, expose like how this man want to expose and different wrongs i feel wrong mild compared to some of the wrongs that someone to do People who can learn to love each other, you know. God can help you, know. And they can learn to love each other. Stop this scandal and spreading things and embarrassing people and shaming people. Please. 
We're in the era where we learn something back in the day. I'm sorry that some of us were grown up in bad homes. Some of us, I say, in terms of as Jamaicans. Bad homes where parents were terrible and never showed us that affectionate love. Because they probably didn't even know how to. Some of them, probably they all they got when they were younger, somebody shouting at them. And they saw that where they seemingly conformed. So they feel, oh, so I saw me they conform. So if me shout at this one, I saw him go conform. No, 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 no. No. Let's just try to be loving and affectionate, no? I don't twist it. So if you see me come and give my, my sister, when I say sister, meaning a female, a hug and a kiss, but I say, oh, Lord, or whatever. Come on, people. The Bible says, give it, greet each other with a holy hug and a holy kiss. Even you men, yes, you can greet your, your men, friend. I know we, we culture differently. We're not going to force that on you. But you can do it. You can say, I love you. Nothing wrong with that. And that's what help eliminate certain, you know, sexual twisting things. Because you can learn to love each other from man to man in a healthy way under God's order. Woman to woman in a healthy way under God's order. Because you know based on the Bible it says, you know, in terms of intimate romantic relationships is really between a man and a woman. You know, that's my policy. That's my belief. And I subscribe to that till Jesus comes. I subscribe to that till Jesus comes. But I'm simply saying as men and men you can love each other in a healthy way. David did that with his friend Jonathan in the Bible. And Jonathan did that with David and it was a healthy relationship. David, you know, you know the story with David. God did love David bad, bad, but David did just bad as he has. He did love woman bad. And yet he had his good friend Jonathan. And when he said he loved them, they, you know, a certain community tried to twist it. When he said he loved him that more than that of women. What he was trying to say is, basically, look here. You know some love woman bad. But my friendship to you matters. I wouldn't, for example, maybe Jonathan might see a girl that he likes. He might like her. But him say, you know what? I make Jonathan go out with her. I mean, I'll mash up my friendship over this. Let us learn to love each other, people. Please stop scandaling people. You see videos like it, you shake your head and say, God help them. Please provide help for them. Provide help for them in whichever way you can. If you know them personally, you can help them, you help them. Don't scandal them. Do not send a video, make it go viral. It destroys their lives. It destroys their and the lives of their children. Please, people, make, make we just try to inject love in the society now. No, make we just come out of this scandal and disgrace and shame and humiliation. No, please. Even if the person is wrong, bang. Even if the person is wrong, bang. Come out of the shame and disgrace and embarrassment, no? We're not here to police people's personal lives also. It's none of our business though, in terms of, like to say, we're gonna, you know, we have to take it on on ourselves to reprimand and to do this. Yeah, that will come into it and if that is really needed, that will be done. But let us come out of humiliating and embarrassing and scandaling and spreading things, tail bearers. The Bible talk about it, you know. May I, that, may I make you know, I need to read Proverbs. It's a serious thing. Be careful. Be careful. It's a dangerous thing. I always like rumors and tumors. You hear them sound alike? It's this very same thing. The same effect where you say tumor, cancer, and all them things. It's the same thing rumor have. And I call it out. And, and, and you might say this is not a rumor because it's something. For, yeah, but when you're a tail bearer with somebody, it's slandering. So slander the, or in the original meaning people use slander as lie. It's not lie. The meaning of it is really telling something. That it's obviously something truth telling like this. But for, with evil intent. You know that if you spread that. If they send that video out to millions and millions of people. It will destroy his life. His family life. Now no matter if he never did do that. Then this would not have happened. Alright perfect one. Make sure you walk circumspect all the days of your life. Make sure perfect one you walk circumspect all the days of your life. Don't make a mistake. Don't slip, don't slide. Because when the very same words are uttered, you can't say anything. Because you say, yes, if he didn't do this, then this would not have happened. Maybe true, but have a little compassion. Him name human being and not judging a damn soul for nothing. Because myself not perfect. I may not have done something like that or I may not do something like that. But I am not perfect. I am not perfect by any means. I've hurt people, you know, and I regret it. Maybe things that I've said, things that I've done, I've hurt people and I regret it and I'm sorry. And that's why I have to, I, for the rest of my life, I have to try my best to do to others as I would have them, as I would want somebody to do to me. Any little thing. I'm not tell you, I'm not going to sleep sometime with maybe the things that I say. I'm not going to tell you, but I'm not going to consciously and deliberately just go out every second, every minute. I want to say every second, like consistently and frequently to set out and hurt people with, especially with my words. 
especially people with my words. You understand me? We have to do better as a people. We have to do better as a people. Please stop scandaling people, stop gossiping people, stop being tail bearers, stop spreading terrible things. Come on, love others, treat them the way you want to be treated. And try and help others. If you see them fall, get up, lighten up, liken it onto going to the medical doctor. Somebody with a, a chronic illness, a bad disease. And when they go there, they just want the doctor to care for them and try and help them to live as long as possible. We're all doctors in some sense if we want to be. I really am sorry for that man and I pray that God can bring some level of restoration to him and his family. I don't know. I pray that that's, it's awful. The whole entire situation is awful. I just can only hope and pray that they bring, God brings restoration to he, and bring some to, to him, and bring some restoration to him, and to bring some restoration to his family. It's awful. Even the young lady in the video with him, she needs help herself. You know, I pray that God will bring that level of restoration and transformation, because some, as Jamaicans have a way to say, "What oh, evil comes good," which is true, which is true. And takeaways, my takeaways in it, uh, people um, in it, it's especially in marriages, I don't know. I mean, my encouragement to you, persons who are married or aspiring to be married, um, make sure that, you know, you have that symbiotic, that compatibility. You know, people, you, you, you know, be like-minded, be like-minded. You have to be, Bible says, if two can't agree, they can't walk. <laughs> and it's a very deep meaning. Think about it deeply. Try and be equally yoked. That's one for those who are not yet married. Two, if you're married, you know, if you're married, presently married, you have to work at your marriage. You have to work at it and in a sexual way, especially with church people. We want to make it taboo. We don't want to talk about certain things where the marriage is concerned. We have to do it. We are, we are real. We are human beings. Flesh and blood in a disabody. Yeah. So you could have hold it till, I mean, the, 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 what is something name? Halo up on your, your head top. And the angel wings are come out your back. Human feelings are gonna lick you. Sexual feelings are gonna lick you. You want no say in the marriage. And the woman is satisfied, the man is satisfied. You don't have to deal with that. You don't have to learn to please each other. You don't have to learn to work at in a relationship. It's, a, it's like just like a job where you want to keep thinking about it. You don't want to lose your work. You got it. You get a, a thousand percent. You have to give your marriage the very same thing. And more. If you want it to work it out, it's something that you have to work. I never forgot years ago I spoke with a lady and she was married for whole heap of years. I could have said 50 other and, and it was a it's a good marriage. I mean, you know. And the lady said, Look here though, it's a work. And it's not the first person I heard with that. You know, somebody from a good marriage. She said, Work. And most of us sometimes we're selfish. We're not willing to work at it. Or we don't have stick to itiveness. So as soon as you see something bad, you give up on the marriage quickly. I can't with him this and that and the other. I never forget a lady said to me, my mother's very good friend. When I'm prim and proper lady, you know, very little, you know, very spunky lady and thing, prim and proper. And she said, Tony Ann, I'm going to tell you this. She was married for 50 odd years. You know, same age as my mother. And she said, Tony Ann, the first 20 years was hell and powder house. Terrible. But you know what kept them somehow? Love. Love kept them, you know. She says, remember the day she do some things. And I went spell out some of the things that she said, you know, you know, that she did to him in, in terms of her marriage. I'm not talking about any extramarital affair or anything like that. No, like just, you know, between the two of them. And she said, you see, after that 20 years, you see the next 30 odd years, most of the marriage, she said it was a bliss. She even fell back in love with her husband. It was a bliss. She couldn't believe it. She just said, Tony Ann, don't just give up quickly. We give up on each other. Remember, we are broken people now. We need transformation. We need restoration. Please make 2021 and onwards be a year of transformation and restoration. Don't just give up on people like that. Can you imagine if God gave up on, gave up on you or God or others had given up on you? Because you don't know, sometimes the bad ways you want to have. And she said, just stick to it. And when she said it, it rest, it's like it, she planted a seed. It just, I felt that seed go down. It's like it went down in the earth, so to speak, and rise. And I said, okay. It doesn't mean that they must take any little fool. I'm not talking talk about just taking anything in a marriage. And I'm going to kick you up and box you up. And I give you a bun left, right, and say, I'm not telling that you must stick to certain things. Don't miss what I'm saying. But if you see where there is a glimmer of hope in working on that relationship, as bad as it may seem, work at it. Work at it. Don't just give up so quickly on people because people can change for the better. Just as all them change, I don't say change for the worse, they can change for the better. Usually, 
as I said, we come from a broken society, Jamaica especially, especially we are we come from this thing of humiliating people, especially from children, humiliating them, embarrassing them, and it grows into adulthood. It is aggressive way of dealing with things. Everything has to be raucous, boisterous, and vulgar, horrible, horrific. I've seen it, I remember, with a man scolding a child, and I said, oh my God, when a lot of a lot of men go through that and that is why they are the way they are today they go through that they don't know any better so wherever you can show like a better show it it may take time because remember Rome wasn't built in a day so don't I don't I don't want to subscribe to this thing about people can change it can for the better you can do your part you don't worry about that you are not God you can't change no human being I love it but just don't give up on people so quickly because people didn't give up on you you do you were you weren't always nice and this is what you think you are so that's one of the takeaways from me in this. Work at your marriages, people. Please work at them. And I'm not saying that by working at them and having a great marriage will, will completely eradicate like infidelity and certain types of things. No. We live in an imperfect society, world overall. But it we can reduce it. It can reduce it. It can reduce the chances of that happening. Put spice in your marriage too. Some of the daddy daddy and boring, boring and all of that. And I'm not only talking in terms of sex. Just everything. How you dress up and how you fix up yourself. How you are with him you know make him feel a little good and you know run joke and be humorous and be fun loving and be real be transparent be vulnerable be nice be a nice human being be nice women be very nice to him talk to him nice talk to him with respect show love to him do all of these things you understand me a lady was saying to me if your husband can't study her you know and that, you know, she, she was just sharing her marriage, and I loved, I loved being around that lady because, you know, she, she, I see where she works, and she feels she don't work at her marriage. We say you work at it, you might think you don't work at it. She said, she, she said, it's up there, boy. Some things that she tell me, I laugh till me, me no know me no roll and dot up myself on the ground. You know, the experiences that she has had, we should do. Just you know, just hold on to our family life. I respect her for that man, and her person. And I said, to, it has to do with her personality today, because she's one of them vivacious kind of lady like myself. You know. Work at it, people. Work at your friendships. Work at your relationship. It takes work. It, you know, it just it just does become this blossoming flower like that. You have to water it. You have to, you have to work at it. Pray for the for the for the police officer and pray for the lady in the video with him. You understand me? And pray that his relationship with his wife can be restored. Nothing is impossible. God says, with him, nothing is or ever impossible. It can be. You know what I mean? Tired of hearing the whole part divorce, divorce, and mash up. Me tired of it now. Oh gosh, let us pray for a, a transformation now. We're going to pray for of all of us and a healing in our land. Yeah man, people, we can do it man. Come on, we can do it. Don't, and take yourself away from the gossip and the tail bearing. And if you have the video, delete it. If you have the video, delete Do not send it to anybody else. If you have, just say, God forgive me. And you, send, and you delete it. Delete it, people. Delete it now. Don't, 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 don't. Watch, watch it and, and make a joke out of it. And a, you know, stop now. Stop now. If, if you had your phone, stop now. Just stop now. I'm not passing judgment. No, 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 perfect. Don't pass no judgment. No, no human being can judge a, a soul. No human being. Whether or not you, you, do, you would do something like that or you do, you do something. Kind of one sin in the world. And funny enough, if you look at the Ten Commandments, that come way down. A whole heap of other things. The funny enough, the first commandment, God says, put no other gods before him. Love him first and foremost. First and, and part B of that same one says, Love your neighbor as yourself. So put yourself in a man position. You would never want if you were to do a video like that to get out to the public. So don't spread it on a man. Don't do it. Whatever seed you so you shall reap. Don't do it. Do not do it, people. Please come out of this humiliating thing. Come out of the embarrassing. Treat your children good as well. Stop treating your children aggressively because that's how you feel. If you're angry and your child has done something, wait a while before you go to them. Wait a while. If you take a day or two, if you take a day or two, if you take, take days, make it do that. If you have to take a couple of weeks, if you know so you really struggle with that angry, anger thing, wait. Then you address it in a respectful manner. You're teaching your child because they're learning. A lady said to me, they said that, you know, we're discussing about, for example, and this is my final point, like she was saying, some persons were saying people are born homosexual, and I don't, I don't agree. I said you can be exposed to certain things when you're younger. You know, not necessarily exposed to sexual acts, but certain things apart from molestation and, you know, rape and all of these things. So she, she gave an example of her. She said, you know, you're probably right because her three-year-old daughter, um, granddaughter, she was bathing her. 
So you know when she bathed her, she has to bathe her private area. And she was twisting up herself and so forth. And uh, she said, honey, what happened to your baby? Say, feed for him, grandma. And she said, okay. She said, all right, sweetie. I have to ba Grandma has to bathe right there, you know, because she doesn't want it to smell funny. And, you know, smell bad. And, you know, for it to be dirty. So grandma has to clean it. She said, grandma has to clean it? Yes, grandma. All right, uh, grandma. You know, and she explained to her. And she said, I don't want to make any boys to touch it, you know. No boys to touch it. She said, okay, so only must make girls. And she had, when she said that only must make girls, she said, paused. You know why she had to pause? Because she didn't want to give her the impression that only girls must touch her private area. She said, no, baby. Right now, like you said, give an example. She said, what I mean is that I don't want the boys to touch it. Uh, unless, like you said, for example, if the brother or father bathing her, it must only be to keep it clean. You know? But not that only girls must just touch down there in terms of washing the area or touching it. She couldn't leave it blanket like that because if she left her granddaughter, the possibilities that she can grow up thinking, Oh, when it comes to that, that private part, it's only a female must touch down there. You see it? So it's what she could have exposed her granddaughter to. So she had to clarify. She had to clarify. The three-year-old, three-year-old, the formative years read Jean Piaget and Vygotsky's um, theory on the cognitive years raising a child. Zero to seven are the important year, years. That's why if you listen to some other persons who, you know, who experience, like they, they said they're homosexuals, they tell you from their five, six, they felt it. It may be because of the things that they were exposed to. I gave an example like that. You follow me? So you're not born that way. It is things you're, you're trained into that way somehow. You know, it slipped through the cracks and it was ignored. So that grandmother was smart enough to say, Ooh, hold on there. Before me tell her, I said, only female must touch it. No. She had to rein herself in that way. So we have to be careful, people. We have to be very careful. Be your brother's keeper. Be your sister's keeper. Don't be a scandalous person. Don't look, don't humiliate people. Please, don't do it. You're human. And it, one day, it may not happen to you today. It can happen to you tomorrow. Somebody for you would never want that devastation on your family. If you have the video, delete it. Delete it. Don't make a joke out of it. Because they mentioned the ice. Come on. You know? That's a sex talk. I don't know that already. You understand me? Think about the wife. Whether or not she was the one who sent to, whether or not is the, 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 the other lady there in the act with the man, did it or the man himself or somebody that they may have sent it to, it doesn't matter. You yourself, if you have it deleted, don't don't help further to this. People, let us come out of this thing of humiliating people and embarrassing people and scandaling people and messing up their lives. Let us stop it now, please. Please, people. Please love on each other. Love on each other. No matter how you are grown up. What do you learn yesterday? You can unlearn today and relearn tomorrow. We're in that era. Please. Don't be so quick for just feel good about something negative about somebody. And laughing and skinning your teeth. Come out of that. Please, people. It's not good. It's not good. Let us learn to love each other genuinely. You don't know? Ask God to help you. What I didn't know before, I, and I, you see me know now, it's because I, it was taught to me. Alright, so have a good one. Stay blessed. Be blessed.